what can you tell us about the team, Chris? Is big, um, big Mac going to get a run? The big $64 question. Um, yeah, Matty Eagles is going to make his debut on Sunday. Um, the dream has come true, I guess, for him. Started out, out on that show, the recruit, but the dream's come true because he's worked hard and, and uh, you know, he's been fantastic over the last uh, year and a bit since I've been at the club and um, he thoroughly deserves his opportunity. He probably deserved it before now. Um, particularly once we moved him to, to defence halfway through the year last year, he just turned into a really good player. It just, just suited him. So um, uh, he, he's finally getting his opportunity. It was uh, well received by the group. Uh, this morning and um, no doubt there'll be a bit of publicity around it but uh, it, from our perspective he thoroughly deserves the opportunity. It's a pretty remarkable story isn't it to think of a guy that's come from a reality show and at 27 or however old he was when he came to the club, 28 yeah. now, but and the progress, are you surprised at the progress he's made? Yeah I am, if you had have been at the first training session he turned up to, which is, was in fact my first training session with the Lions, uh, the number of times he got falconed at training and missed kicks and missed handballs, I was sort of thinking, "Whoa, this is going to this is going to test me out a little bit and us out a little bit." But uh, no, from that day forward, he's just continued to improve in all elements: skill, game understanding, diet, fitness, the lot. So uh, he's come a long, long way. It's a great story. So was it the even halfway through last year, his name wasn't getting mentioned too much? You just said then about the move to defence. Mm. Like what? changed for him or why was he able to elevate Yeah, it, it's interesting some, with some footballers, you just move them to a different spot on the ground because he was playing forward sort forward rut type role in, in the NIFL and then we thought, oh, we'll give him a go down back, see how he goes because you sort of do that at uh, the reserves level to try and find out a little bit more about your players and he just took to it so naturally and uh, I've seen that over the years with different players and so it was more trial and error and then it appeared to fit really well with him and then we just continued to develop him in that position. What was Reaction. I mean, it's a dream for him, isn't it? Yeah, as a, as a bit. He, he's not a. He just smiled like he's not one of those guys that sort of carries on too much. So, uh, but I, I think deep inside, at the age of 28, the journey he's been on in his life, that uh, there was a mighty big moment for him this morning. It'll be even, even bigger on Sunday when he takes the field. What? He's popular in the group, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's. Um, He's one of those quiet sort of guys, but he's a real, uh, real carer in the group, and, and he does take a lot of the younger guys under his wing. He's got a couple of them living with him at the moment, and uh, uh, he's just one of those people that look, looks out for others a lot and brings a fair bit to the culture of the footy club. Um, you know, there's more to him than that sort of guy that with the springy hair and the TV star. He's actually a, a person of great substance. Well, what's giving you the confidence to give him a run now? Performance. You can't ignore performance. Uh, he's continued to play well over and over and over again, so uh, he might have had to have earned his spot a little bit more than some of the others, so uh, he, he, that's why he's in the team. Did it take you a little while to, for him to convince you that this, even back end of last year, wasn't just a hot run of form, or a, not that you can fluke form, but um, did it take a little bit longer to, to prove to you? Oh, no, last year we were pretty convinced that he could actually play, but it was, it was a little hard to upgrade him because he's a Category B rookie um, but um, you know the reason we kept him on the list is because we had high hopes for him and uh, um, yeah we've been able to bring him onto the list yesterday and, and give him that opportunity. Big first test it's probably the biggest home crowd you get of the, the year so you're not, not scared of throwing him in in front of a... Well we're hoping it won't be our biggest home crowd no, because yeah. what we're hoping to do is improve and get more people to come to the gather so um, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be our biggest game for the year at this ground for sure. There will be a, quite a few people here, so there'll be some atmosphere. But um, uh, he's, he's a pretty down to earth sort of guy. I think he'll handle that really well. How's the mood on six? Do you have to keep them up or are they up? No, the mood's really positive, um, uh, I'd have to say. Um, we keep our players pretty realistic about where they need to improve and, and where they're growing. and. We've made some big improvements this year, like a, a good example of that is the fact that defensively we've improved so much. Um, at the end of 2016 we're sort of averaging 132 points against per game. We got that down to 117 last year and we're at 94 at the moment. So that, that's a six, six and a half goal turnaround in, in 28 games. So contested ball and clearances, we're really competitive in the AFL. Um, just our ball use has been letting us down a bit, particularly the last kick um, inside 50 and a little bit of our pressure stuff so 
we know where we've grown, we know where we need to improve, uh, we're working on it and what we try and do each day is get busy trying to get better and not sort of think about, oh, woe is us, we're, we're zero and six, we're on a mission, we know it's a long term one, but uh, we're working every day to, to get there as quick as we can. A lot of talk about Collingwood having made improvements this year as well. Like, well how have you assessed their form so far? Oh, their form's been um, <coughs> terrific. They probably had a little bit of a slow start, but their last month's been outstanding. And, you know, to beat Adelaide and Adelaide, that's a pretty special sort of a victory. Uh, they were really good against Essendon on Anzac Day. And really against the Tigers last week, it was only in that last quarter when Richmond were able to burst that game open. And they do that against a lot of, lot of teams. Um, so you'd have to say Collingwood are one of the informed teams in the AFL and will represent a really uh, great challenge for us. But just a bit left field, what have you made of all the talk about the state of the game and the suggestions that have been thrown up? Do you think it needs changing or addressing or that was um, being overcooked a little bit? Well, I'm on that committee, so I have to be a little bit careful <laughs> what I say. Um, I think this discussion comes up every year depending on what the stats are saying. So if the score rings down, uh, all the all the people that talk about the game talk about ways we can increase scoring or increase high marking or all of those sorts of things. I, I think what I would say is we have to continually look at ways to try and make our game more attractive and, and uh, a great product for people to come and watch because after all that's what we're in, the entertainment game. And you know the people who uh, supervise the game need to keep that in mind because us coaches will, will always just do what needs to be done to try and get a, a W at the end of the day. So uh, uh, people with a bigger uh, picture of the game need to continue to look at ways to, to make it better. I spoke to the vice captain this week, he admits he's frustrated. Um, mm. and he's, but he said, as a coaching group, you're working with him, and the, his players, his teammates are working with him. What are you doing with him? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a phase you go through, I think, in your football. Once you become a really good player um, and other teams recognise it, uh, they'll try and find ways to stop you. So it's a credit to him that he's got to that point in his career, uh, that he's become such a good player and, and that they, the opposite position seems so pivotal to, to uh, how we play. Um, so he's got to learn ways to work through that, whether they're tactical measures, whether they're going to different positions, whether it's just lifting your work rate. Uh, whether it's just having a different attitude towards having a bloke run around with you all day and when you're not used to it. Um, it's all of those things and many players have been through the same. And uh, uh, I, Dane, talked to a couple of, Zane, Dane talked to a couple of those guys uh, this week to get a little bit of advice, which has uh, been beneficial to him. Um, we have to help him out a little bit more as a team and what we have to do as a team is become a better team with more midfielders who are worth stopping. So it takes a little bit of the heat off him. So it's a, it's a process, but um, a challenge that he's embracing that we are all embracing as well and, and uh, know that he'll come through the other side of it, a better player is it feeling, for it. Sorry, is he feeling like he's um, not living up to his standards? Like is he personally feeling the pressure? Uh, he, he, he's got high standards and he wants to feel like he's contributing strongly to the team and the team effort, and he's aware of the fact he's one of the more experienced players and one of our leaders. So that that brings a little bit of pressure, but um, you know we've tried to ease that on him. We just want him to play his role. And uh, as I said before, we know that if if he continues to work hard at it, he'll get through it. Hodges back. Yeah. Um, do you feel like it restored a bit of confidence in the boys? Have you noticed that? Uh, oh no, actually, I, I last week Hodge didn't play, and I thought our performance against GWS was full of merit. Um, fundamentally, we lost that game by five goals. They kicked three goals in the last three minutes of the second quarter. There was the game. All right? The second half, we lost it by a point. I thought our back line stood up incredibly well with that Hodgie there, which is what we want it to do, because his job is to teach them and to leave a legacy. And so I was really keen to see how our backs would go without him out on the oval. And I thought they responded particularly well. That GWS team is capable of kicking big scores. And I thought guys like Darcy Gardner and uh, Harris Andrews and Daniel Rich uh, performed magnificently well. So uh, Hodgie being back in this weekend is, is more of a bonus than anything else. It's good to have his presence out on the oval, but uh, we must all remember what he's here for, and that's to, to teach our guys so that when he isn't here anymore, they really know how to play the game down there. Speaking of goal kicking, has that still been a focus this week? Goal you? kicking? Oh, yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, we were, we were one of the most accurate teams last year. And that sort of kept us in games. This year, um, 
we're one of the most inaccurate teams and that's costing us games. Um, and our, tra our training and what we do hasn't changed. So uh, uh, we spent a lot of time practicing this week, as usual. Um, probably more the mindset. Sometimes it can sort of become a psychological thing, so we've sort of tried to address that, get guys to stick to their routines. We know it'll turn. None of these things are ever, are ever permanent, but uh, they're a little bit frustrating because there's no doubt we might be two or three wins right now with a little bit more accuracy in front of goal.